Hey guys, it's Casey from the Montreal Student Network, and today we're going to be looking at cis and trans substituent relationships. Uh, cis and trans are going to be words that you're going to hear often throughout organic chemistry, and they're used to describe the relationship between two normally identical groups on um, a compound to say, are they both pointing in the same direction, or are they both pointing in opposite directions? So, to get started, we've seen in the past um, wedge and dash uh, notation, basically want to see if if an object is pointing outside um, or point outside of the screen, basically point towards us, or is it pointing into the screen away from us? And um, we basically the notation that we've always been accustomed to learn is that when we see a triangle that's shaded in like this, that means it's coming out of the screen, so it's actually you know coming towards you. And when we see a triangle, um, depends on the direction. I like to make them the same direction like this, which is just striped it's pointing into the screen so say we have something like this we can say that whatever i put on this one right here will be pointing towards us and whichever i put on here with the one that is dashed will be pointing away from us so say i were to put a ch3 group right here and say i were to put an h right over there and obviously if i didn't even have the h there you'd automatically assume that would be pointing in the other direction because there's only two things that could be attached to a cycloalkane ring because you know we've already have two bonds to the other carbons so we can only have two more bonds so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go put another one over here and this time actually no we're going to keep in the same direction put another ch3 group now we can assume right now, even if I didn't draw the H, we'd know that the next H, the one that's attached right over here, is in this direction here. I'll put it right now, and then in the next example, I won't put the H's, so you guys can you know, not get confused in case you don't see the H's. You can know that they're actually already there. Now if we're looking at this ring, we see that both of the CH3s are in the same direction. They're both pointing out. They're both pointing towards us. Now would it be safe to say that this these two things pointing out will be the same as an example as over here. Let's draw them on. And this time I'm not going to be drawing the hydrogens. You can assume, oops, you can assume that they are still there. Now in this case, this, this CH3 over here is pointing into the page. It's pointing away from us into the page or into the computer screen. And this one over here is pointing out, and so are these two. Now, would you say these two things are exactly the same without, don't worry about the hydrogens, and they're not. They're actually two completely different things because the, you can probably, let's we'll just add the hydrogens on. Here's our hydrogen number one, and here is the next one. These two things are not the same. This one we have out and out, so we're going to write out slash out. And this one we're going to have in slash out. We have the, obviously the other way around. This one is the in. Now, it doesn't matter the direction. It matters the relationship between the two things. If they're both pointing in the same direction, it could be out and out, or it could be in slash in. We're going to call that a cis relationship. Now, if we have both of them pointing in opposite directions, it could be in slash out or out slash in. It doesn't matter which one. We're going to say that has a trans relationship. Now, when it comes to naming, these uh, terms are going to come before the numbers. So let's name this. Uh, let's name both of these right now so you can see how they come together. We see this one. We have two identical substituents. So it doesn't matter which way we number them because it's going to come out the same either way. So we can assign number one number two, and number three right over there. So we can say that's a cyclohexane um, ring, cyclohexane ring. Uh, we can say that it's going to be, without, without looking at the cis, we'll call it 1, 3 dimethyl cycloalkane. Oh, sorry, cyclohexane. It's been a while since I made a video, so I'm a bit rusty. There, cyclohexane. Now we're going to add that cis term to say that they're both pointing in the same direction right over here. Now you're going to really want to use this when you're looking at a relationship between two things. When you get three things, it becomes a little messy because, you know, you have to see which direction everything's pointing. And that's typically something that you probably will not encounter on an organic one chemistry test. But for the most part, you will encounter cis very often. So remember, once again, cis means the same 
direction. Um, looking over, we're going to look at the trans one. You can see that this CH3 and this CH3 over here are pointing in opposite directions. So using the same naming pattern that we use with this one, we are going to call it, I'll write it over here, trans 1 comma 3 dimethyl cyclo hexane running out of room right there but you can you can see the point um, so that's really the naming pattern when you encounter both of those now what happens when we move over to the chair version the chair is a common uh, orientation you're gonna see with cyclohexane um, you'll see quite often and we know that there is axial and then there is equatorial positions and if you want a little reminder the axial ones are the ones that are pointing out we'll call them AX the ones that are pointing up or down directly so we see this is an axial this is an axial, this is an axial, this is an axial, obviously this one is here, this is axial, and this is axial. So all the ones with the little dashes are axial, and the ones that I didn't mention are the equatorial ones, and we covered that in a previous video, so I won't get into too much uh, detail. Um, axial, axial, right there. Now, what ones are pointing up and which ones are pointing down? They alternate. There's three pointing up that are um, equatorial and three pointing up that are axial and likewise there's three pointing down that is equatorial and three pointing down that are axial now for the sake of this video I color coded it for you guys so it's easy to understand the ones in green are pointing down and remember there is an equal distribution of equatorial and axial contributing to this and the ones pointing up are in whoops I was gonna write axial the ones pointing up are in white so we see right now that there's a combination of each. We see over here, the green, it's axial and it's pointing downward. But over here, it's still pointing downward and it is equatorial. So it switches. So you really want to look at what direction is it actually pointing on paper. We see that this one over here, it's pointing downward. And it's quite obvious that it is. And the one over here, it's quite obvious that it's pointing upward. And even over here, we see the little relationship here. This one's quite obviously pointing downward. When you look at these two over here, this one might be a little less clear than these, but you see that one of them is clearly pointing upward. And you can automatically just by, you know, um, just getting rid of ideas, you see that it's right there pointing downward, pointing downward pointing downward and finally pointing downward and coincidentally you can go with the other direction and say here's one that's axial it's pointing upward one that's um, sorry, that's equatorial one that's axial one that's equatorial axial equatorial and finally axial so it does it does change and you really want to see you know what is it actually showing me on paper that's the main concept of it so that's the introduction to cis and trans relationships always the main concepts the main takeaway from this video is cis same direction does not matter if it's in in out out um, up down I mean sorry up up down down um, they just need to be in the same direction and obviously for trans they have to be in opposite directions and like always in case you don't see these hydrogens on your test, you can automatically assume that they're there and they're in the opposite direction of the one that they're telling you. You will not get something like this. Um, don't worry, if you get a question, let's actually go down a bit more, I'll put some time into this. If you get something like this, you will not need to know which, um, you know, let's do, uh, let's put one more. So you get something like this, don't worry, you will not need to know what it is because if your teacher wants you to write cis or trans, they will give you the stereochemistry, which indicates, we'll get into a bit more of that later, which indicates if it's coming out or not. So don't worry if they don't give you these bold, um, you know, shaded in arrows or the da dashed arrows indicating going into the page, you will not need to know it. So don't worry about that. I was worried about that when I was writing my test and turns out, you know, it's teachers aren't really allowed to ask that because it's not a real question. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, once again, this has been Casey with the Montreal Student Network. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.